joined now by Pico Vera of Michal Brannox and Aidan Gerrity of Glenamadi uh, to look ahead to this weekend's intermediate semi finals where Kilconley face Ilan Iron and then Dunmore McHale's facing Kerfin B. Um, lads, I suppose it's 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 hard for you this weekend now watching on uh, in the semi finals with, with both E being so close, Aidan, I suppose. Coming to you first, like Kid Conley out this weekend in the semi final, you took them all the way uh, to extra time. So it, it must be hard now when you're seeing them prepare for a semi final. Yeah, Paul, it is. It is. I'll, I won't uh, beat around the bush. Very disappointing. Uh, we, 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 we didn't show up on the day. Um, just didn't, never, never kind of got going at all. Everything kind of seemed to go wrong. Ball handling, a lot of mistakes. Uh, like I think their two goals kind of came from turnover and stuff like that. But however, on the day, Kilconley were, they were very good. They were very organised, very well set up. They kind of knew they seemed to have a lot of homework done on us. Um, and we just weren't, well, I, when you say we weren't able to adjust, we, we, we were still leading the game with time up in my eyes. And they managed to come down the pitch and get an equaliser. But... Um, with 13 minutes on at the end of the day I don't think we've anyone to blame only ourselves we've 15 against 13 for maybe 15 minutes second half and uh, we still weren't able to get over the line so yeah disappointing but look on the day Kilconley, Kilconley did deserve their win overall I think When you look at that game Aiden, towards the end I suppose when you get that goal at the end of the second half you, you, you think you have it did you personally think you had it then like because obviously they only had 13 players and trying to for Kikani to go up and work a score. Um, Kerrigan then out on the sideline kicks a worldly that you probably wouldn't expect most lads to score. And then I suppose Paul Mannion gets a free that's fair out. He skies it, but then I suppose one of your players were too close and the referee moved the free up for them to narrow the gap and send it extra time. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot went on in the last few minutes of that game. Like, But uh, I didn't... I know Paul Mannion, that free he, he took was way out the pitch. Um, there wasn't a hope of him scoring it in my eyes. Uh, I think he, he ballooned it fairly wide. But whatever happened in the meantime, I don't know if one of our players run across him or say something or whatever. But yeah, they got, they got an equaliser then. But at the same time, we still managed to go back down the field and go a point up um, with five and a half minutes of injury time played. You'd imagine you're over the line. Uh, but I suppose going back, you asked about the goal. The way it was going, the way that game was going, we got the goal. Yeah, I don't know how many minutes was left. So that put us, I think, two points up. Um, but really, like, you're, you're against 13 men, like, there's no way they should be coming up the field with the ball. Maybe a lack of cuteness on our behalf. I know Kilkenny, when it went to extra time, they were a lot cuter than us. It, they were doing what we should have done probably at the end of normal time. Um, I won't call it cynical. I'll call it game game awareness, game cuteness, and we just we just didn't we didn't do that. You know, not coming out on the right side, Aiden, but like it definitely goes down of one of the games of the year this year to senior, intermediate, and junior. It just seemed to be one of those games that was a chaotic game and just literally had everything. <laughs> it did. I think it had uh, red cards, myself included. Uh, Black cards, I think. Two, four goals. Uh, yeah, it kind of did. It, it had it had everything, and and you know, I think, first, like obviously, we were extremely disappointed. Like, but people were saying that the atmosphere was brilliant. But I suppose the Curra Finn Ch- and Chum senior game was on afterwards, and obviously, it went to extra time, so the crowd was getting busy, bigger all the time, and people were saying the noise was just unreal. Like, but uh, no good at the end of the day, really. You know. Yeah, <clears throat> obviously disappointing uh, for yourselves to come out on the wrong side of that. Um, but at the same time, it's it's nearly the attitude, I suppose. It's a bit too early to say it now, I suppose, when the semi-finals and everything. But obviously, for you, it's go again now. Like it, it still is. It still is a very young team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's very a very young squad. Like I think myself, um, I say I think most of the lads are under. I'd say the majority of them are probably under twenty three um few lads then maybe in their mid to late 20s and 
two two lads over thirty. I think that's that's the break the breakdown of it. Yeah, so it is. It's a young squad, but you know, like numbers wouldn't be huge. We're pretty lucky at the moment. We've a good good few lads have come together at the same time, and they're all very friendly and all all good friends. Um. <laughs> I suppose the hope is just that they'll 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 stick around, you know. Obviously, you're going to maybe lose one or two for traveling and stuff like that. I suppose as every club, um. But if you can pull two more into the squad next year or something like that, obviously that will build. Like, but yeah, very young squad and um maybe a bit at times maybe a bit young, maybe not a bit, a bit inexperienced, um, not doing things that we should do at certain times. Um, I mentioned game game cuteness, uh. Lacking a bit of that, maybe, but yeah, the future is pretty bright for them. And just finally, before we uh, move over to Feek about Michael Brownson and Leonard, um, I'm just curious, Aiden, like, what was it like having Darren Malahi involved with you this year? Uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, just brought different level of professionalism. Um, like, so we had Tomas Giblin was manager, he was manager last year as well. And you had another guy, Tiernan Welsh, but Tiernan stepped away. So Tomás, um, he got Nigel Fahey on board, local lad as well, brilliant. He he kind of organised everything with the, all the logistics side of it. Tomás could manage the team. Um, and then Darren just took all the training and uh, he was absolutely brilliant. And like, I don't think we ever trained as hard. We ever trained as hard. Like, and some of the, like, I don't think it was any that we had did the same drill. It was all something different, like absolutely brilliant. Great, a great lad, great lad. Um, hopefully, with the, we can hold on to him now. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd be in demand. He'd be well known around the county anyway from his days playing with Milltown and Galway and Jarlett and Underage and everything. So he'd be well known and uh, yeah, top guy, top guy. And Fika, I presume for your for yourselves this weekend, similar to Aidan and Glenmaddy, it's it's tough for you. Yeah, it's tough, all right. Um, I suppose watching your neighbours as well pass you by into the stadium is always tough. Um, but overall, I think we were happy with the performance the last day compared to how we performed against Caltra and against Brendan's. Um, we just about got through with the skin of our teeth the last kick of the game. Um, but look, you have to hand it to Aaron. We were two points up. And they worked out a kick out and their corner back came up the field, Peter O'Donoghue, and scored a goal. I suppose you could, looking back on it, we let him in a bit too easy. Very similar what Aidan said earlier on. A lot of things that he said seemed with us. A bit naive from our, on our behalf. Something that we uh, need to work on for next year. But look, fair play to them. Um, I thought when we got when we went two points up, and uh, with Dinny's uh, point that we were going to close the close the shop, but um, something that we're not good at, unfortunately, and it's something that goes back to the two county finals. But overall, I'm happy with the performance, but um, a lot to work on for next year. Like if you. Have you thought about what you could have done in them situations like a lot of times when you look at the goal? Because as you said there, it was it was nearly similar to Keith Connolly and Glenn Maddy. It was a game that was tip for tat, high scoring, um, free flowing at stages, some some outrageous scores, and then just uh, it was it was really a sucker punch for you at, at that time to concede a goal as well. Yeah, like ex- exactly what Aiden said. We just had to be more cute. I suppose you call it cynical, but and I know it's not the right thing to do, but sometimes you just have to drag a man down. Um, we let them. We let them. I think we let them up the full, full, the full pitch without touching, touching the man, touching any man going through on goal. Um, it's very hard to watch. There's a picture that's been sent around in our WhatsApp group. I think there was five lads around uh, Peter O'Donoghue when he scored the goal. What we did was we just backed off, backed off, backed off. I suppose when you see a cornerback coming up the field as well, you probably want him to have the ball, but fair, fair juice to him. Like he took it well. Um, but it's tough. It's tough to it's tough to um, watch it back. Uh, but like that, being being smart when we don't have the ball, especially in them dying moments, it's a skill in itself. Uh, sometimes we put a lot of emphasis on what we do with the ball, but I suppose it's just as important when you don't have the ball, 
especially in them dying minutes with your two points up, um, how you defend. And you mentioned their, their neighbours and everything. Do you get behind them now or is there still? Um, it's funny. I think with our club, it is because for years, when we were seniors, it was always, you'd have a, you'd have that bite with Spiddle, with Caro, not so much that Shamor, um, or Cezan and Shamor would be good friends, but with Aaron, I suppose they are just after coming the last few years. Um, so you, like, you, I'd say the majority of us will be rooting for Aaron, where I suppose if it was Caro or Spiddle, not so much, but, <laughs> Um, no, I wish them the best of luck. There's some great lads there that um, um, I'm good friends with. Um, so yeah, I hope they go all the way. Do you think what stands to Ireland, I suppose, in the last few years? Like for an intermediate team, pick they they're playing league football at like quite a high level. Like they're the majority of teams there playing in the league are, are senior clubs. Yeah, it's. It's actually gas. You'd be on the what's the score, and you'd be looking at them in division to the division two, and they'd be beating your the salt hills of this, of the you know salt the great teams in Galway. Um, and it really is stuck to them. But I think one thing that I noticed a lot this year is Sean Recurrence has has been training them this year in St Michael's in Westside, and I just go back to when Tyler got a black card in the first 20 minutes of the game I could hear Sean McCurrence screaming at them all to get back and we had a kick out so they all dropped back between I'd say the 65 and back between 65 and the 45 and I don't think we scored between them between that 10 minutes and that's all to do with Sean McCurrence I think he well I've heard he's been doing very good very good training sessions with them Um. And playing them tight games in Division 2, it, it, it has to stand to them. It really does. It's massive as well, because when you consider how much velocity is weak and um, yeah. have them on the line and even just even organising the defence. Yeah. Like, defend, they're def, like so with Aaron, they play with 14 men behind the ball. Um, but with Aaron, it's funny, they, they all have their men from the 45, between the 45 and the 35. So there is options there to kick the ball into the corners. But the only thing is kicking the ball in is hard because you have there's so much pressure um on the kicker from the 45. And I'm I'm I really do think Sean McCurrence has a lot to do with it. Um that intensity um they play with, it's it's huge. And you can hear you like you could hear Sean talking on the sideline. And I know they'd all love to have him playing, but um him taking them training sessions. Um, I've heard they've been, you know, they've been they've been exceptional. Um, so as much as they love to have him on the pitch, it's a huge advantage to have him. He his voice, it's, it's huge. You were saying earlier, I think Pete, that they're down one or two other players this year as well. Pardon? Or is, were you saying earlier on that Aaron Islands are down one or two players, or is it just one current that's out there? They they do. They they're down. They're t- they're down three starters. No, I'm not going to name them because. I'm not 100% sure, yeah. uh, but Sean McCurran, as if I wouldn't mind, I was talking to him outside the his stadium after, I'm not, his, his name is now is after Blank Me, but he's done his Achilles, and O'Hearnon, he'd be wing forward for them, for the stalwarts for Aaron Islands for years, um, and when you look at Aaron, I'm nearly certain they only have five subs, so, you know, for three players, to be missing three players um, like that, Aaron is huge, um, so you really, really have to commend them how well they're doing with the, the lack of resources they have. They're training in in, in Westside. I know uh, they're the Dublin lads come home since the start of the year every week in Loch George. Like that is, <laughs> you wouldn't see half the senior teams doing that. So do you know there's a there's a serious bunch of men there. Um, whether they get over the line or not, I'm not sure. But you can't um, lack their effort. It is Kilconley versus uh, in an iron we are <coughs> predicting here. Aidan, what's the thing, I suppose, after Kilconley did defeat you after extra time, like what was the most impressive, I suppose, attribute Kilconley had that you were most impressed with that maybe surprised you coming away from that game? 
Um, I suppose, Paul, their, their, their defensive structure, I thought, was, I thought was very, very good. Um, we found it very hard to pick out, like we owned a lot of the ball, even in the first half when we were, when we conceded two goals, we still had an awful lot of the ball. But we found it very hard to kind of look up and pick out a man. Um, there always seemed to be a, you know, the D always seemed to be well covered. Um, so we ended up passing the ball back and over an awful lot. So defensively, I, I was very impressed with them. To, well, I wasn't impressed with them <laughs> on the day, but uh, I am now when I think back of it. Um, yeah, defensively, I thought they were very good, and that's not something that I would have. We would have. Well, I didn't watch any of their other games, but we played them in the league. But obviously, the league is the league, and championship is championship. But I, it's not something that I would have associated with them previously. I thought they were very well set up. Uh, um, De- defensively, and then was on top of that, um, their their kickouts. They're very direct with their kickouts. They're not kind of they're not kind of looking for a short one much. Or no, if it's on, they'll give it. But they very much aim for Niall Daly all the time. And in fairness to him, like he's I don't know, is he six four, or six five? But he's excellent in the air, and very direct. Then when they get it, it's straight in, straight into the the full forward line. Um, if if he if he catches a clean from a, a kick out, takes the mark and strips it, um, and then you've you've three four top forwards then up front. You feel Aiden maybe that you didn't exploit them enough in the full back line because even when you just looked at your full back line, like they're not the biggest players. Like the the three the three players who play in the full back line, Keen Davin, uh, J P Byrne, and I Mullen, like they're not huge players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I suppose we probably should have maybe moved it around a bit. Maybe move, moved Porrick, Gertie, or Connor Rafty, or someone like that, maybe in full forward. Someone has a bit of height, a bit, a bit more power, um, and maybe just try a couple of long balls. It's, you're, you're right in what you're saying. It's not something that we did. We probably panicked a bit, bringing balls into into the tackle, and maybe afraid to afraid to go more direct um, with long balls. So. Yeah, I'd say that's definitely something that we did. We uh, didn't exploit, definitely. But then again, you know, at times you were looking up. Um, it was very hard to pick a man yeah. out because you know, they had to cover back. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And oh. somehow, even when they had thirteen men, they seemed to have cover back as well. But <laughs> it can always be easier said than done. And it's like a, a key matchup. This weekend already seems like, like you'd imagine Niall Daly and Colm O'Brien are going to go head there. That's actually I I completely forgot about that. It's going to be a huge matchup. Like Finton has probably been our best player all year, and the respect I have for that man is for that club is huge. Um, and you know they had a right battle the last day. Um, you know you could call it either way. Um, we played. Aaron Islands two years ago we picked them by a point in the semi-final and I suppose like you you'd hear talks about Diego um, and I, I'm from there to the last for the last the last two years he's really now he's really improved and I'm very very impressed with him against Clare and Clonburn in the group stages and against us um, now Niall Daly is going to be is going to be a tough opposition. Like Nile is six foot four. I watched him against John Moore. He's a good, he's a good, he's a good player. Um and like geez, it's hard to call that one, really and truly. Like Nile has pace, but one thing about Diego, he, he's a strong man and he's for a big man, he's uh, very comfortable on the ball. So to be picking out who will win that one is uh, huge. And I'd say whoever wins that would have a a huge bearing on the game. Speak just from your game, like <clears throat> Aaron Islands, nearly every score they got. Martin O'Gill and Owen Paul, I'd say, had to touch the ball every time. They're just such intelligent uh, wing forwards. And you know the thing is, Owen Paul is thirty-eight. Um, like another man, huge respect for him. And Martin Gill has been there a long time, and the, we actually when we tried to put uh, uh, one of our quickest men on him the last day but once again he's um, he's a brilliant player brilliant player and then two boys 
a huge mind. And like Martin Gill doesn't cover as much as you expect, but what he does so well is he gets on the ball, he kind of sits in the pocket, and what he does with the ball is, you know, it's huge. And one thing I love about Martin Gill that I haven't noticed in the last two, a few years is he's very good at looking the looking at the looking for the ball and actually turning turning his back and going away from the ball and getting the ball towards goal. Something he did with us a few times. Um, them two lads would be huge. But um, as well, something that I'm looking forward to is who like will Patrick O'Donnell go on Prendergast? Um, or what's going to what's going to happen? What's going to happen there? It's going to be um, it's going to be a huge call for Aaron. Um, I heard that they're thinking about putting Peter um, O'Donnell on him, the cornerback number four. Um, but we'll see. But it's going to be it's going to be some game. I was on the phone to a few of the lads before the podcast here, saying, "What do you think?" I rang four. I rang four lads. Two lads said it killed Connolly, and two lads said Aaron. So <laughs> it's. And it's funny, I thought, I've been, I've been saying Aaron all week. And it's funny, the last few days now, I've been just looking at, like, Matt, like Paul Mannion. Like, I just, who's going to mark Paul Mannion? Like, he's, I saw him against John Moore in the, in the group stages. And I just thought he was on fire. So, it's going to be, and then you look at who's going to mark Tyler. So there's a serious matchups there in that in, the, in that in that game, um, and when you look at teams in intermediate, if they get a big win like that, and Aaron have already Aaron and Kilconley have two big wins under their belt. If they if they win at the weekend, um, it's huge. Like I li- I think of Letcher Moore last year, they bet us, they bet Aaron, and then they're on the momentum. So. Where you'd you know people would probably expect Dunmore to have maybe a nicer draw, and they had Clare and Clonburn, where Kilconley Aaron have re- had a tough games. And like we're, <coughs> I think we all said it off air. Like the, I think nearly everyone in the county at this stage is expecting Paul Mannion um to be in with Galway this year at some stage, just with the form he's in, he's been absolutely remarkable. Aiden, yeah. like. From looking at that game, what do you what do you do with Paul Mannion? Well, I suppose Aaron will do what they've been doing all year, and that's dropping 14 men behind the ball. Um, I could see them having so they had they had their number five. Um they had him, they had been hit, had him had him as a sweeper um all year. And what I think what they'll do is I think they'll I think they could play with two, or they'll definitely have the sweeper on Paul Mannion. Uh, on top of maybe whoever Peter O'Donoghue or Patrick O'Donnell, whoever is on him, I think there'll be two on Paul Mannion because um, at the moment, Paul Mannion is definitely, I rate him as the, one of the top five uh, f- um, forwards in Galway. I really rate him that highly. Um, he's a fantastic player and he has been for a long time. In, like, from from I suppose looking back to your game because that is like his performance of the year you could say. Like if if you were in an hour now this weekend, what would you do with Paul Mannion to try and nullify him? I suppose. What would I do? Uh, yeah, go on. Sorry, um, it's it's funny. Paul Mannion actually starts midfield with Niall Daly, but he he plays a complete he co- a complete free role kind of. He's in and out. He's wing forward. He's he's both. He goes to both wing forwards. He's corner forward. You know, he's, he he kind of all all the place now. He's very hard tied down. I suppose what Feek is saying, if 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 Aaron Islands are playing a defensive system, it's very hard to come on the ball then. So if I if I was Aaron Islands anyway, I'd definitely, as Feek said, I'd, I'd be getting your sweeper to to to, to pick him up and sure. follow. Him. Follow him Aiden, everywhere you can. Aiden, do you know what I'm just thinking there? Like, with how defensive Aaron were, they still coughed 17 points 17 against points, us. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, there's, there's something there. And that's one thing with, with Paul Mannion. He can score from anywhere, lads. He scored one point there. Um, they actually overturned us. I think we had a cornerback and he was out near the sideline and he just nailed straight over the black spot. Like, he can score from anywhere. Um, 
and he's a brilliant free tech. But like that's that's just one man. Like that's Paul Mannion. Like a lot of people forget about Connor Marsden. Yeah. Good, good solid player. Good passer of the ball. And then you have Michael Murphy in corner forward. Very accurate. Very good on the ball. Good work rate. Um, and uh, on, obviously on top of that, then you have Paul Prindergast. So there's a, there's a lot of people Darren Islands have to tie down. And I suppose their defensive structure will help that. But it's a it's a it's it's, it's a lot of holes to fill you. Um. It, 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 it's going to be a, a tough no what I would say is I think where Iron Islands are going to have a massive advantage is Pierce Stadium mm. like it's obviously like a home pitch to them they play all their games there um, like I know we played them last year we haven't played in Pierce Stadium I haven't played in Pierce Stadium in 10 years but you just knew that they knew their surroundings so well um, I think that I think that will be an advantage for them um, but yeah, look, it's going to be a belter, and it's very hard to, very hard to call it. Aiden, you, you talked there, I suppose, about the Kid Conley forwards, Conor Marsden, Paul Mannion, Michael Murphy, David Prendergast. Is that where you, do you think maybe Kid Conley might have an advantage up front? Like, you, like, do you think Ilan Arn, like, because we look at all those four forwards, they're four scoring forwards. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where Kilkenny are at their strongest, to be honest. Now, as I said, they, they were very good defensively against us, but up front, like, what did they score? 2-14. Two, two um, possibly could have had another goal. So they are very, are very uh, effective up there, and they, they work extremely hard. It is where I think, between the two teams, I think that's possibly where Kilkenny might be stronger up front. Um, and then I suppose you're missing Sean Mulkern. Obviously, they've other good defenders as well, but he, he is a huge loss, and I know he's he's obviously running things for or helping run things in the sideline. But like they have a lot of matchups to get Aaron Islands, in my in my view. Um, now I know Patrick Patrick O'Donnell is an, an excellent defender, but he could probably play. He could be he be will be as as effective up as a forward as he is a defender. So I wouldn't know an awful lot of the other Aaron Islands backs. Um, obviously, they had a cornerback that scored a goal against uh, Rannox the last day as well. So, plenty of good footballers there, I'm, t- I'm sure. I think even just uh, thinking of the kickouts, like Aiden was mentioning there, how Tommy Mannion, it's old school, like likes to go long, likes yeah. to have it in around the middle. Keen Langford, um, he's, he's the type of keeper who loves to get the ball away as quick as possible. So, like, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Will yeah. you decide press or sit back or, or, or what's going to happen? Yeah, it's it's an interesting one because I thought with Aaron's kickouts the last day, um, like he did scuff a few of them. And it's some it's it's somewhere we actually looked at is pressing up as much as we could on the kickout and it worked. It worked for us. Um but uh, do you know what? I think it'll just go come down to like whoever wins that duel between Niall Daly and Colum Diego will be huge. Um, and you know what? It could be. It might just be by, by the two of them breaking balls. So it could be down as well to the to the, the breaks. And that's one thing Aaron are very good at. Um, um I just for just forgot to mention one lad there for Aaron and another very very good player is Killian, who's the centre forward for them. He's a oh, great man to yeah. yeah. Killeen Oak, I think it's Killeen O'Connell, but Oh, Killeen O'Connell, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, but like another man who is an exceptional footballer. Um and it's linked everything together so well. Linked it, and he 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 scored an absolute beauty in the second half. He took he got I got the wrong side of him and he got a, a really, really serious score and he had a very good day as well against Clare and Clare and Clonburn. So um but yeah, look, it's it's a, it's going to be it's it's it's, it's so hard to call um, but it's 50-50 really isn't it? it it's really it really is 50-50 like you, you look at you look at the forwards of Kilconley but then you look at the, all the tough games Aaron have been through in league and the the momentum they, they have behind them um oh it's like like you know what if I had to put my money on it I'd go Aaron just by a point or two but Jeez, like it's 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 going to be a cracker of a game. 
Aiden Fink's called Aaron. Who are you calling this weekend? You know, it's funny. At the start of the year, I always said Aaron, Aaron Islands were probably the, the team to beat. Um, Jesus. Uh, I'd give a hesitant vote to Kilconley. Just on, on the basis of, I think, that win against them the last day coming through extra time with, you know, bring it to level to level it up with 13 men and then winning an extra time, I think it's going to really stand to them. And I, I'll give them a hesitant vote. Hmm. You're right, though, Aiden, about the pure stadium factor. That could be a factor, but you're, you're yeah. dead, dead right about that. That's one thing that we always, always say we're lucky most right well when when we were senior for years, like it was like our second pitch. Yeah. And I, yeah. I've played there a lot. Um like if I, I could be wrong, no, I think if the last time Kilconley played there was against us in uh, three years ago. So, you know, for all them young lads, it's, it's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know it, yeah. And you, you know, another thing that's huge is the ref. Um, Ronan McNulty like he'll have a it all depends on how he plays the game do you know like if you have you have forwards like you have forwards like um, Kilconley um, will he let us go that would probably suit um, the defence of Aaron if he's if he's you know blowing the whistle a lot that could suit the forwards of Kilconley for the yeah, freeze yeah. Manuel will, Manu will sh- as you said Manuel will score from anywhere so there's a lot of factors, but yeah, it'd be a great game. Lads, this is though what really makes the intermediate championship so special. Like you look at this game, you look at Nivana and Dunmore last year played out of cracker, even yourselves feet there against Spiddle. Like when you look at it overall and you just compare it to the senior now, it is a pity that a lot of these two intermediate games are kind of clashing with the senior games this weekend, but I suppose just time of year and the way things work but like it's a it's a fantastic championship some might even say feet like that it's a better championship than the senior sometimes because i suppose you do have those few standout teams in senior but not so much in intermediate yeah i, I i've been saying it for years i think the format four teams in the group um any team can win you know you look at you look at for, for example 3 years ago when we played spiddle um you had was it you know you had eight like Glenn imagine now Brendan's you wouldn't hear these teams really doing that well and next thing you know we play Brendan's last year and we get we get bet okay they beat us again this year you have Glenn, Glenn Maggi now coming Do you know there's there's a lot of new teams coming in there and you have the likes of ourselves now not where we were um, but still you know trying to hold our own but at the start of every year, you could say that there's six, seven, eight teams that could win intermediate. Do you know, look, like look at look at for example, or more, like or more are a, a a solid solid intermediate team, and Hedford, and there they are now in a in a in a relegation. Do you know yeah. it's it's like there's so many teams that can win it. It's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And one another thing I'll say is it's a bit more open. It's a bit more open football. I remember. I think it was a eight. I've been playing senior football for eight years, and like for a team like ourselves, you'd be just hanging on to win a game or two, and it's it's tough. It's tough defensive football where in intermediate it's just a bit more open, maybe a bit more naive, but geez, as a as a spectator, like there, you know, like like from what I heard with Glenn Maddie and Kilconley, like it was an absolute cracker. No more than ourselves and Aaron now going up and down the pitch. Now you could say the defending wasn't as good as it should be, but you know it was a great game going up and down. And you know we'll get that again now at the weekend. It really is what makes it so competitive there, as Pete out outlined the isn't it? Oh, absolutely! Like uh, he's one hundred percent right there when he's saying you you could probably pick you could probably pick eight, eight teams. That on any given day could probably beat each other. Like even, like even you look at Kilcoyne Clebourne, they're after losing probably the best player in the country in my eyes, and they still managed to go out, come out of their group. You know, in fairness to them, um, and you know, seemingly they had a lot of chances against Dumore. Uh, Dumore are red hot favourites, and obviously they came through. Like, but 
on the day they could they could have got over the line um like so yeah it's it's uh it's a uh, it's brilliant brilliant competition um like <laughs> i don't know as an age or whatever like but when i started playing senior with glenn maddie that's she's i don't know 16 17 years ago whatever it is now obviously you're older so what i would say football maybe it was easier back that time at senior level I'd say now, I'd say if you're playing senior, it's like pure, it's very, very defensive, very structured, very organized. Whereas the intermediate is still a bit more get go to it up and down the field. Obviously, you have your defensive structures as well, kickouts and everything. But when the game opens up, it's often, as, as Feek said there, it's up and down the pitch and it's hell for leather and everything else goes out the window. The next game is the other semi final, of course, on Sunday. Uh, Dunmore McKayes versus Kervin B in Tube Stadium. Aiden, you came up against Kervin B in the group stages of the championship this year. Is there fear for Dunmore, though? You're playing Kervin B, you don't want to be beaten by Kervin's second team. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Like, as I said, as we said off air there, um, I think it was last year. I think Cor Finn beat Dunmore in the first game. Uh, so obviously, I would say probably Dunmore were caught on the hop that day, maybe. Or as you know, Cor Finn may have had a few se- more senior players playing at that time that might 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 have got regraded later in the year. But it's one thing about Cor Finn, like they're they're always organised. They're and they're going to play football. They're good footballers. So you'd want to be you'd want to be very wary of them. Um, and be under no illusions of 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 uh, of what they could do to you, open you up. Like I know when we played them, it was it was turned out to be a terrible day. It was uh, one Sunday morning there. Um, I think actually Michal Fix team, Michal yeah. were playing Cantra yeah. afterwards. It's cleared off a bit for your game, but Dirty our game was lashing out of the heavens. And our thing was to keep. We we thought that if we could stop Curran scoring goals, that's we'd have a great chance, you know, and luckily enough, we did, they didn't create, I don't think that any goal chance at all that day. Because if you look at all the group games before that, they'd scored, they'd scored goals against uh, Mike Cullen, uh, Cartoon. So we knew if we stopped them scoring goals that we'd have a good chance of beating them. And then even if you see the last day again, I think against Ballygar or against St. Brendan's, they scored two early goals, I think as well. And once they get them, their tails are up and they're they're uh it's gonna be cocksure they're they're gonna go the, to the wire with you like. That's a huge that was a huge win for Car Finn. I I I I'm I was very impressed with Brendan's. Mm. They're fit 15. Yeah. Um, long and they've two no I'm not sure. I I I heard and I'm, I'm not sure but were they were, were Brendan missing a few. I'm not sure no. uh, maybe I know I, I maybe Carol Healy was playing. Or was missing. Um, I know he's one of their forwards. Now I don't know. He doesn't always start for them, but no. he definitely worked a couple of points. Yeah. He wasn't playing anyway. I'm not sure who else. To be honest, Cunningham is brilliant, and they've they've yeah. they've, they've but the one thing about Brendan's is they have serious runners from the from the back. So for Carvin to get a win over them, it, we talk about momentum like it's huge for them. Just on the. Uh... That thing about Rory Cunningham. Do you think he's someone who could potentially be with Galway? Yeah, I do, and I actually think Carl as well is is very good as well. Just the two of them inside are very good. Um, but Cunningham gave us a lot of trouble. Um, we didn't. He didn't actually. He only came on for the last ten minutes last year, but this year now, um, very good, very patient. I know the first twenty minutes of the game, he scuffed three balls up in the air. And to say we told him all about it is an understatement. And he still kept at it. And I think he was the one that was laughing because I think he got like one five on us. But a fantastic player, really, really good player. Um, another player that could definitely um, or should be should be in with uh, Porrick. I think he was in there. Was it a year, last two years ago? Uh, I, think I think he was asked him, but he was doing a masters in UCC. Okay. He's on the UCC oh, yeah. Sigerson squad with Sean. Yeah, that's yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, I know. So it just showed his pedigree. Um, th- this weekend, like Aiden, we talked about 
I suppose Dunmore are going to want to beat Kirvin's second team. Gary Delaney, ex Kirvin footballer, uh, involved with Dunmore, so like he he's going to know these lads inside out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, from what I hear, Gary's very uh, he, he does an awful lot of homework. Um, so and obviously being from Kirvin, he he will know them inside out. Like I know Kirvin, they're strong around the middle. Alan Malloy, Brian Rafter are on the middle. Even Brian Rafter, I think he's playing more pushed up forward now. And I think he's 211 or 212 scored in the championship to date. Um, then you have one of the Brady lads. Uh, I don't know. Is it Connor Brady. Connor, yeah. yeah. Great target man as well. And he he goes out around midfield as well. Um, so he, he'll be he'll be one that I'm sure Gary Delaney will have, have covered off. And then you have you have uh, Colin Kelly. Um, yeah, he plays with Brave Wanderers in the just, yeah, yeah, like excellent footballer. Um, Patrick Egan, just a young lad, I think he's just out of jail, he's done his leave insert. Yeah, excellent potential. Um, maybe Gary Delaney might, might know enough about him. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure he will, he will. He'll have plenty of friends at Curve in that that give him inside information too. But uh, and then, um, one of the Donovan lads is a wing back. Barry Donovan, yeah. Barry, yeah, like a brilliant free taker. He'd score from anywhere across the across the front forty-five in both sides of the pitch. So, yeah, like, and then you just don't know what else Corrigan could bring on the day or who could appear for them. You know, they've such a they've such a a, a, a load of footballers coming through all the time, or even they might even bring back some lads that you might not heard for in a couple of years. You just don't know what they'll bring on the day any given day. So. You know he he's he's I'm sure he'll have his homework well done, but they'd want to be very Dunmore want to be very wary of Curfin. We talked about Dunmore obviously here, like that they're not gonna to want to lose to Curfin's B team, but as well for Dunmore, like there, there's a lot of pressure on them, you could say, because they are favourites to win this intermediate. So like Curfin really have nothing to lose this weekend. Yeah, no. Um I suppose all year I've been <laughs> Um, hearing about Dunmore and I actually went to watch them against Kilconley in Milltown and I thought in that first half I said holy god these are exceptional their forwards I think their forwards are as good as most senior forwards in Galway um, they have five or they have five scoring forwards um, do you know um, Jake Slattery Paul Costello Corey Costello, McGrath, um, you have Thomas Gleeson now coming back from the collarbone. Um, so, like, there's, there, there is pressure on, there is pressure on Dunmore. Like, like we play Carfin twice in the league and you, you do feel that pressure that you don't want to lose against Carfin's B team. Um, but then you turn that around, Carfin definitely wouldn't be afraid of Brandox or they definitely won't be afraid of Dunmore or any team in intermediate. Um, so yeah, it's it'll be it'll it'll the huge pressure on Dunmore and I was, and I think you know this game could be a bit of a shootout because I was looking at the scores there. Um Carfin Carfin only have all their scores from play are eleven points from freeze and Dunmore all their sc- scores from play are nine points from freeze. So most but the two teams, most of their scores come from play. Um and two very good um forwards like you look at Slattery there for um Slattery, not Slattery, Brian Raftery for Carfin. He scores he's two ten and Colin Kelly has one nine. Um so yeah it, it's it's a funny one. I'd you expect Dunmore to win, but I expected Brendan's to beat Carfin. Do you know so yeah. anything can happen and an intermediate we all know um on the, it's all about on the day. Yeah you, you talked there from playing Kerfin B uh, previously beat like like as you said there you don't want to lose them and we've alluded to that. like like what's a I suppose what's that kind of pressure like going into that kind of a game? I suppose for for our own club that we're senior there for eight or nine, ten years, I don't know how much it was. You 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 know we were up against Carfin um nearly every year with with, with the look of the draw we used to always get Carfin we used to make fun of it, but then you're going down to intermediate and then you're playing their second team and you're supposed for your the likes of your 
you know, your family and or your cousins or your friends saying, geez, you're playing Carfin B. There's that added pressure um, on you. And, you know, I suppose, thank God it hasn't happened yet, but I know for a fact it will happen soon enough that we will lose to them. Um, it's, it's, a not an, it's not a nice feeling. Um, you, you prefer to be just playing the teams that you're used to be playing, like your, your Aaron Islands or your Venomagis first team so it's just it's funny I can't push I can't explain it but um, the, there's pressure there's huge there's huge pressure uh, and like you, you you take the I was I had pressure in a in a league semi-final could you imagine these more lads with the pressure they have in a county semi-final and the pressure that goes with it that Dunmore um, have a great team under 19's A last year favourites to go off intermediate um, and um, all is between last them year as well with that huh? they hurt to last year as well with that like they were yeah, exactly they should have won that day so it's 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 just massive pressure on them um, I, like I, I I don't know I could be wrong but I'd say John Moore would have preferred to be playing Kilconley or Aaron yeah really do you would. know what I mean but look um, I don't know I don't know it's a funny one now I don't know what you think, Aidan, how that game will go, but like, you'd expect them more to win, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would expect them to win. Um, but like, as you said there, Fick, an awful lot of pressure on them more. Like, it's like, obviously, the more are next door to us. Um, great tradition, great club, great people. Um, a lot, an awful lot of work going on there, underage and stuff, and you can see the fruits, yeah. as, as Fick said, with the forwards and stuff coming through. But like, the more have this, not so much the players themselves, but in the more, the older generation always think that the more are a senior club, you know, um, and the senior and like, especially if, they're, if the lads are socialising or if they're talking to older people in the town. I, I've often been in there and I've seen it. My dad actually used to play with the more and massive pressure on them to get over the line and get up senior, especially after what happened last year. Like, they really didn't perform at all against Lettermore, I thought, on the day. Um, I, w- I expected them to win that. Um, I think they were in the semi-final the year before. You know, they've been there, thereabouts. But as Feek said, they're like the f- players they have come in there. Like, they've... It's eerie. Like, you know, you have Jake Slattery, Paul Costello, Shane McGrath. Um, Brendan Carr is on. Brendan Carr, brilliant free taker, yeah. And then at the back, you have Declan Rashkin, Connor Lyons. Midfield, Joe Burke, he's been around a while as well. You know, he, he, I don't think he's certain, but he'd be good impacts up. I mean, you've, you've, you've Matthew, now I know Matthew Relson is carrying an injury. He, he, he went off injured against Kilcarn Coburn. I don't know how he is now. But then you have his brother Damien is back. You know, he's an exceptional footballer. And they've Martin Cleary back after a couple of years not playing as well. So some amount of talent there, some amount of talent, it's unreal. Um, do you know what though, Aiden? Do you know one place that you could get at done more is in midfield. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. They wouldn't have a big, they wouldn't have a big midfield. No, I know Shane McGrath goes out there a lot. Yeah. Fantastic leap off the ground, brilliant. But I would say they'd like to utilize him up for, up front more. But it is, uh, you're hundred percent right. It is one place uh, where they, they they're probably a, maybe a, not as strong as other areas. And I know Curfin will be fairly strong around there with Alan Malloy, Brian Raftery, Conor Brady. Um, so, that, yeah, it is one place where they could possibly could be got at. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's... Yeah, no. Yeah, go on. No, I was going to say something there. Go on. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, massive pressure on Dunmore. But I do think... I do think they're definitely good enough to get over the line on uh, against Curfin. Um as I said, they got caught last year against them in the first round, but I, I, I don't see that happen this time, to be honest. And uh, I'd say I'd say do more win. Would you like to see your neighbours do well, Aiden? Ah, yeah, look at uh, there's a good rivalry there, I suppose, between ourselves for a few years. But I've always bet us, but in the last couple of years, we've got we've got more competitive with them again. Um, we bet them in the league this year and then we beat them in the league semi-final as well. Um, but as I said, championship is different. We, like last year, they bet us by two points in the quarter-final, but I actually thought of that a few minutes ago and I was going to say it. 
exact same thing as what Fik was saying there against Kilconley. The blue was away in the first half. I think it was like 3-4, 3-5 they scored in the first half. But we totally out, outplayed them in the second half. But we just couldn't get over the line. They bet us by, there was a point or two in the end. Um, but we own the ball. And it's probably that if they get a lead on you, that they are vulnerable to taking the foot off the gas. I know it's hard to keep it going for 60 minutes, but they are they are they seem to have that bit of an issue where they might take the foot off a bit of off the gas if they if they get a good bit ahead of you and Kilcon we nearly caught them last year and Kilconley nearly caught them again this year but yeah no look at I would I would like to see them doing well and I would like to see them see them win it out um and we'd like to join them again at some stage some stage maybe I, I think yeah. of all teams that are left I think they'd be the best suited to go up to senior as well. Possibly yes yeah yeah they yeah, like, probably the most natural footballers there. Yeah like um like Aaron, like geez, it's only what Aaron doing. Like the five subs, but like I, they don't even have an underage team. Yeah, sorry, Fig, sorry to cut across you. Have, you mentioned that earlier on. Have they actually only five subs? They've won for, I, against Clare and Tom Byrne. They only had five subs. My God, fair play. Yeah, though. yeah it, it is unreal. And like training in same, in Westside and in Lock George, it's it's. Like I know, I know some no more than our own, no more, not our own, but you'd hear boys making fun of them for coming home on the week on the weekdays. But you know, fair fair play to them, like oh, fair play to them, fair yeah, fair to them. Um, like very little, very very little resources. Um, and do you know what? They're sound lads. One thing yeah. I say, about, yeah, yeah, they're gents. Like in fairness, you know, you could play, you could go up against teams, and there you know yourself, but they're sound. Um, but going back, like Dunmore have a serious underage team coming up there under 19s. Like anytime you win an A, A final yeah. against Clare Galway, um, do you know was it against Clare Galway? It was yeah, um, like, yeah, I think Manchester. yeah, um, yeah, I think so. I'll beat them in the yeah. final. Yeah, oh yeah, but like any any day, or not sorry, any day you win under 19s, and you're going, you're you're nearly in a back to back intermediate. I just think. Yeah. Of the four teams that are still left, I think they'd be best suited to go up. So you you expect to see Dunmore come out on top this weekend, Pick? Yeah, I do. Um yeah, yeah. No, look, if they if they if they if they're expected to win this out, they should be winning this game the next day. No, don't get me wrong, there'd be serious pressure on them. If they get a good start, um I think you could you could you could see this. Um, done more winning by five or six points. Um, but I'd say Carfin will keep say to themselves, boys, if we stay in this game for as long as we can, you look at Letcher Moore last year, you look at Kill Connolly, you look at Glenn and Maddie last year. Maybe you know, maybe they don't like that home stretch. I'm picking small things here about Dunmore, but you know, I'd say that will be. The main thing in the in the carving camp is let's stick with them for as long as we can. Two huge games uh, to look forward to in the intermediate championship uh, this weekend. Uh, that's all on our intermediate uh, preview show of the semi-finals. Um, if anyone is watching, can subscribe to the channel as well on YouTube. Um, it does have the channel grow so that'd be uh, greatly appreciated but Feek and Aiden, um obviously two tough ones for you to preview um but thanks a million for your time no, no,